This is not a political video. We're just talking about what is in the books. Be nice. Hey internet, I'm Steve and welcome to Raffo. It's Pride Month! Okay, this is getting released on the 30th, so it's the last day of Pride Month, but still, it's Pride Month! If you've been around the Sanderson fandom for, let's see, the last big kerfuffle was in January, you know that Brandon has gotten flack for his stance on LGBTQ plus issues, mostly in relation to an essay he wrote in 2007, which was, admittedly, pretty homophobic. Since then, he's publicly apologized multiple times, reversed his stance on gay marriage, and actively donated to pro-LGBTQ organizations. The FAQ post linked in the description details his viewpoint in his own words. Read it. But that's not really what we're here to talk about. Please don't blow up my comments, this is not a political channel, I don't want to deal with arguing. Brandon has said that ignoring the existence of people with different perspectives, preferences, and lived experiences is inherently evil. So he does his best to include a wide variety of viewpoints and personalities in his books. I've been enormously impressed with the amount of diversity within the Cosmere. Not just of sexual orientation, but also the huge amount of neurodiversity, disabilities, and mental illnesses that are represented. Spoilers for the entire Cosmere, kinda. We'll be talking about specific characters from all over the place. Lots of Stormlight to the end of Rhythm of War, but also both eras of Mistborn, Elantris, Warbreaker, and Tress of the Emerald Sea. There won't be too many story spoilers, but if you're wanting to avoid mentions of anything whatsoever, watch this after you've raffoed. Since it is Pride Month, we'll start off with inclusions of the LGBTQ plus community. Alphabet Mafia. On Scadriel, Renette, expert gunsmith from Mistborn Era 2, is a lesbian. You never had a chance, Wayne. And she even gets married to her partner Jaxi in Lost Metal. The Chondra in Mistborn are kind of interesting. Many think of themselves as a certain gender, but seeing as if they don't have bones, they're just puddles of goop, they are, in every sense of the word, gender fluid. Thinking of sexuality as a spectrum, rainbow. Wayne probably isn't entirely straight either. He seemed perfectly okay kissing Melan when she was a uh, he. Probably Pan. He also does drag really well. Hopping to Roshar, Drehi from the original Bridge 4 is gay, courting a man named Drew. These two are based on Ryan Dreher, a college friend of Brandon's and his husband. They're not the only gay couple in the books though, as by the end of Rhythm of War, we finally have Renarin and Relaine starting to get together. When Relaine previously assumed mate form, it didn't go as he expected, because he found he was exclusively attracted to other males. Speaking of forms, the crab people of Roshar actually have at least four distinct sexes. The reproduction-focused male and female of those in mate form, the typically asexual malin and femalin of the other forms, as well as other more non-binary genders that haven't been specifically pointed out on screen. Interestingly, because of the singer ancestry of the Herdazians and Horn Eaters, there's a higher percentage of people who are ace among those cultures. Because Spren are functionally created by the peoples that imagine them, there's significant variety in Spren genders as well. The sibling is specifically non-binary, and explicitly uses they-them pronouns. Somewhat related, most people think of Nightblood as male, but Lyft thinks of the sword as a girl. So it's sort of intentionally ambiguous. While not intentionally written this way, it was pointed out to Brandon that Shallan was reading as very bi, which he's since made canonical. The cause for Shallan's bisexual awakening, Yasna Kolin, is also asexual. Her scene with Wit in Rhythm of War is a great exploration of this part of her, and I'm told is a fairly accurate representation of a typical asexual experience. And Rol Na, the king of the Reshi Isle Relu Na, presents as female, but uses male pronouns when Risen was there in Words of Radiance. But by the time we see him again, visiting Urethiru in Dawnshard, he's bonded an Ash Spren, and Stormlight has allowed his body to fully transition and match his spiritual aspect. In fact, Brandon has said that there would be a disproportionately large number of trans people among the Knights Radiant, considering the journey of self-discovery they go on in their lives. Happy Pride! Sexuality isn't the only aspect of diversity that Brandon explores in the Cosmere. In fact, his very first published book features a significant character on a different spectrum. A dying in Elantris is autistic. 
Brandon admits that his characterization is a bit of a pop culture stereotype of autism, kind of Rain Man-y, which is why he worked so hard to make Renarin and Steris, both also autistic, more realistic and accurate. Those two are a lot lower in terms of their support needs. An example of a higher support needs character could be Dabid, who gets a lot of screen time in Rhythm of War. He hasn't been confirmed to have autism specifically, but some sort of unnamed developmental disability that reads very similar. Minorly, in Edge Dancer, the stump helps calm a kid down who's having a textbook autistic meltdown. There's been consistent debate online as to whether or not Tien is autistic, and I feel like Wikim has some traits as well. Enough to diagnose? Probably not. At least not by me. Other diagnoses are readily apparent, though. Kaladin... has depression. Spicy sads. In fact, it seems to be almost a prerequisite to Night Radiant Hood that you have to have some sort of mental illness. Cal has depression and PTSD, Shallan has disassociative identity disorder and PTSD, Taft has a substance addiction and PTSD. Okay, let's just assume trauma. Renarin also has anxiety, Dalinar's an alcoholic, Yasna obviously has some unresolved trauma and may be an abuse survivor, Lift is Lift. I don't know, she seems mostly fine at this point? Anyway, it's a good thing Kaladin is inventing therapy and revolutionizing mental health treatment over there. Then there's the Scadrial folks. Sazed went through a pretty rough patch in Hero of Ages. Spooks over there huffing tin. And Wayne, dear, sweet, post-traumatic stress-laden survivor's guilt, crippling self-esteem issues Wayne. He doesn't go full shalon with disassociating, but he sure knows how to craft an unhealthy mindset. We've got a whole bunch of physical disabilities represented, too. The Lopin spent most of two books as an amputee. He even puts those one-handed skills to good use, teaching another soldier how to tie his shoes at the end of Oathbringer. Lots of people with canes or other mobility issues. Clubs, Balot. Risen's, of course, paraplegic and is gonna stay paraplegic, unlike Hobber, who got over it. Elantrians are pretty solid examples of chronic pain, or at least what it feels like when you stub your toe really hard and it hurts for days afterward. With Susabron, we had someone who was mute, and we finally got a capital D deaf character with Fort in Tress of the Emerald Sea. He's even starting to teach his crewmates some signs at the end of the book. The only people with visual impairments we've seen are Gaz with one eye, and Anne in Tress, who has micropsia, where things look smaller than they objectively are, which could be caused by a slew of different physical or neurological problems. That dragon is really impressive. We've yet to get much from a fully blind character. Well, at least until Stormlight 5. Journey before destination, you bastard. And that's the Cosmere! Of course, we could talk about racial representation as well, but with the amount of ethnic diversity in Stormlight, where literally the only white guy is the one that goes around murdering people for two books? Oh. Yeah, there's some commentary there, huh? Let me know in the comments if there's anyone I missed. And if you're a member of any of the groups represented, I'd love to hear your take. How does it feel to see yourself represented in fiction? And of course, Please be courteous in the comments. I read and reply to every single one, so just be nice. I was hoping to have my friend Nikki join me for this video. She's heavily involved in the autistic community on TikTok and has lots of contacts with people with other neurodiversities, but she unfortunately wasn't able to. Hopefully we'll have an interview or something with her soon, because she's great. You know who else is great? You are. Thanks for being here, watching my videos, particularly sticking around to the end. Thanks for being you. You're valid and valued. I appreciate you. Also, my patrons are great too. Basically, the only way to increase your greatness would be to join Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, and the rest of them in their support. And then you'd get to see my weekly videos a week early. We're talking about magic next week. It's gonna be fun. In terms of representation, there are some non-Cosmere honorable mentions. Stephen Leeds, the main character in the Legion books, basically has schizophrenia, kinda. The aliens in Skyward have an innumerable variety of genders. Kimmelin, callsign Quirk, is queer. Alcatraz definitely has some PTSD going on, so there's always more to read and find out.
Happy Pride.